online court case management, which is how courthouses manage lawsuit information online, can generate money through a proven approach. This would be a big switch from the current approach, which costs money, lots of money. Making the change to earning money instead of spending money would really help governments that are being forced to cut spending in these hard times. Consider the downtown area of a city. There is a central square, post office, professional building, newspaper, courthouse, and other things. In the last decade or so, technology has changed all of this. Now, in society's central square, we meet with Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and other things. Email performs a task long performed by the post office. LinkedIn is our online professional presence. Blogs are replacing the local newspaper. E-filing makes court lawsuit information available online. Telephone companies compete with Skype and the iPhone. Amazon and eBay are the new marketplace. While everyone has heard of these technologies, one thing that is not so obvious is that each one of the new technologies has been developed by companies that are completely separate from the initial service provider. For example, the post office did not develop email and is not an email service provider. Professional buildings did not create LinkedIn. Local newspapers did not develop blog software and so on. However, the courthouse has developed e-filing technology and this has caused problems, lots of problems. For example, in 2004, the state of California began an e-filing program with a $260 million budget and a 2009 estimated completion date. However, by 2011, the project was not finished and the cost had ballooned to $1.9 billion. The estimated completion date was pushed out to 2015. This left people wondering, how long is this really going to take and how much is it really going to cost? What is most unfortunate about this is not that the cost and timeline for this project have grown significantly. What is most unfortunate is this. In 2011, the e-filing technology required to do this work already exists. It does not have to be developed. And the e-filing technology that exists would pay money to the state of California instead of costing substantial money. So under the year 2011 on this graph, you can see this benefit in the form of a green triangle. The future benefits in the form of cash payments to California and the benefit of having a functioning e-filing system available to the public would increase. If we push this graph down, we can see an even more striking fact. This e-filing technology not only exists now, it has also existed for some time in the past. The large benefits that we could have received from that technology in the form of cash payments to California and in the form of the usability of a functioning e-filing system are illustrated by the large green bar on this graph. The graph has an arrow pointing up because the precise amount of those benefits are unknown. The technology could have provided cash to California and could have provided Californians with convenient e-filing services. We have missed those substantial benefits. By acting now, we can reap substantial future benefits. To recap, e-filing technology can generate substantial benefits instead of costing a lot of money. Now, you might ask yourself, is this really possible? Well, consider two filing systems. This is filing system number one. It is available online and it sequentially lists the documents that have been filed in a lawsuit. One of those documents is an acknowledgement of satisfaction of judgment. If you click on the link by the name, you will see that document. Here it is. The title of that document is right here. Acknowledgement of Satisfaction of Judgment. Now consider a second filing system. This one is also available online and it also chronologically lists documents filed in a case. Here is that same document, the Acknowledgement of Satisfaction of Judgment. When you click on the document icon on this page, you can see the document. Here it is, the Acknowledgement of Satisfaction of Judgment. While filing systems one and two look similar and perform the same tasks, they are in fact very different. Consider this, one of them earns money. The first one does, the second one does not. The first one earns money by placing online ads next to the information in the court system. While this has not been done on a large scale with online court systems, it is a practice that is well established in our economy. It is similar to the practice of placing billboards next to the interstate freeway system that was built and is maintained by the federal government. Here, the court system 
is an infrastructure established by the government in the information superhighway. We should expect to see ads along that highway. Like McDonald's golden arches and gas station signs along a freeway, those ads can grow our economy by helping people traveling along the information superhighway. Generating government revenues from the internet is important because interstate traffic is declining while internet traffic increases. Secondly, one of these filing systems requires no IT staff. That's the first one. The government must hire an IT staff to maintain the second one. One of them automatically backs up, the other does not. One of them automatically updates its software, the other does not. One has free antivirus, free hosting, and no hardware cost. And with one of these systems, the parties to a lawsuit can file their documents online by uploading PDF files to the court system. With the other system, they have to file documents the old-fashioned way by bringing paper documents to the courthouse. On the surface, these two systems do not appear to be different, but when you consider how the information on the screen got there, they are dramatically different. A comparison between filing system number one and the court case management system being developed in California is also striking. The precise features of that project are unknown because the project is in flux and has not been completed. However, based on what we do know, the court case management system will probably not have most of the features that filing system number one has. Additional comparisons are even more striking. Number one is available now. It requires no budget, no oversight. It is proven. It is compatible with apps so independent software developers can make the system even better. It is compatible with mobile devices. It's compatible with social media like Facebook and Google+. It's intuitive and most of all, it follows the traditional approach of doing what works. The court case management system currently does not work. So what exactly are these court filing systems? Filing system number two is the system in use by the Superior Court of California for the County of Alameda. Its website lists additional information on the left and on the top. Filing system number one is a blog. It also has additional information on the right and it has links to social media among other things. Why are these systems so different? Filing system number two was developed by the court system. California's court case management system is also being developed by the court system. However, filing system number one was developed separately by the technology industry. That is why it is as powerful as other technologies in use in our society. Fortunately, these technologies are crossing over. For example, from your Facebook account, you can send and receive email. You can also publish your Facebook status as a blog. In addition, with your iPhone, you can access blogs and from blogs, you can publish to iPhones. How then can we develop an e-courthouse separately from the court system so that it can harness widely used powerful technology? Well, we can use blogs, which is what filing system number one is, and we can use Skype. So how exactly would this work? Well, in the e-courthouse, the court clerk would create a blog and a Skype account. With the blog, the clerk can access court documents and with Skype, they can communicate with the public. The judge would have access to those accounts as well. Neither the judge nor the court clerk would have to be physically present in a courthouse. They could be at a home office or at another remote location. They can also communicate with each other directly in a confidential manner that is separate from the blog and the Skype accounts. Those accounts are also accessible to plaintiffs, defendants, and the public. Now, if somebody does not have a computer or they do not understand how to use a blog or Skype, or if they do not have an internet connection, then they can go to a public library, which of course has a connection to the internet. Librarians know how to use blogs and Skype. So, Plaintiffs, defendants, and the public can go to a public library and access the e-courthouse from there. This e-courthouse would save on security costs because it does not require bailiffs. Court workers and parties to lawsuits do not have to commute during rush hour to downtown locations where courthouses are located, so commuting costs and congestion would be avoided. And court buildings do not have to be built and maintained as much as before. If the e-courthouse cannot handle a matter because of the misconduct of a party or for some other reason, that matter can be handled the old-fashioned way in a courthouse. So in addition to earning money, the e-courthouse is far more accessible, convenient, and it saves significant costs. It is particularly convenient for small claims cases because small claims courts 
are under severe budgetary pressure. For example, in San Joaquin County in California, the small claims division has been closed. The e-courthouse is also more secure because it relies on existing secure technology instead of creating a large centrally managed system that is more vulnerable to system-wide attacks. Several people have expressed enthusiasm for the e-courthouse. If you are one of them, send your state representative a link to this video and ask them to enact legislation that makes the e-courthouse possible.